Chapter 6 After leaving the mall, they headed straight to the Shadow Brigade barracks. It was a fairly generic gray stone, three-story, structure. The only visible windows were on the first floor. It was entirely possible that part of the facade consisted of one-way holographic projections, but she was content with waiting to get inside to find out. Kayla bit her lower lip and grinned as she watched Shinji walk around to her side of the car. Now that he knows what I want, she mused, he certainly seems to have found his swagger. He tripped, catching himself on the hood of the car. Despite her best efforts, Kayla burst out laughing, as he stood back up and rushed to her door. Red-faced, he swung her door open and offered her his hand. Kayla turned her legs toward him and took his hand as she asked, what was that? Shinji blushed brightly. I heard what you were thinking. I thought I'd pour it on thick and ended up tripping on my own feet. She planted her feet on the pavement and slowly stood while looking into his eyes. He took a half step back as she drew near. You're doing well so far, Kayla whispered. Don't ruin it by trying too hard. I'll keep that in mind. He gulped hard as he spoke. She stood there, only about three inches away from him. She could feel the warmth of his breath, and his desire washing over her. A faint smile crept across her lips as his mind raced. He was deciding whether or not to try to kiss her. Kayla hid her thoughts from him as she wondered if he'd keep holding back or bridge the narrow gap between them. As they stood motionless, their eyes locked. Their bodies excruciatingly close to one another. Kayla silently counted down from five. As she reached two there was an instant when she was sure he was going to kiss her, but he did nothing. As she reached one, she pouted and stepped away from him, slightly to the left. You could have kissed me, she grumbled as she walked past him. I know, Shinji said as he turned and rushed forward to take his place beside her. They continued walking together. Then why didn't you? Kayla asked. Her voice betrayed more frustration than she'd intended. You smell like blood, he objected. Is it bad enough that you'd pass on a chance to? Worse yet, he added, you smell like Kim Seti blood. Fine, Kayla sighed. Take me to your shower. They crossed the street and walked up to the main entrance to the barracks. Before we go in, Shinji said with an odd smile. I suppose I should check what your actual security access level is. Kayla felt panic welling up inside of her. She'd been given the name, or more accurately title of Lady Dark Seed, but did that come with some sort of security clearance? What's wrong? Shinji asked with obvious confusion, as he motioned toward the identity scanner next to the outer door. What if I don't have enough clearance? she asked nervously. Shinji began to laugh but stopped abruptly after realizing she was serious. Kayla smiled weakly. Was that a hypothetical question? He asked with a puzzled look on his face. I was just confused, she bluffed while making sure her mental defenses were firmly in place. You checked me in, shouldn't you already know my clearance level? Nope. Really, why not? I'm only grade 4 certified. He explained. So, I'm not cleared for that information. Seriously, Kayla balked. I'm not special like you, he teased. She knew what he meant, but it baffled her just the same. Did her new identity come with special clearance? A rating far beyond what's normally available. Her aunt, Bookworm, had been granted a similar ranking due to her status as a black church rune bearer, but just giving it to her with her new identity seemed absurd. It mustn't be as rare as she was led to believe. For all she knew, it could be purchased. Fair enough, Kayla said with a moment of trepidation as she held her wrist near the scanner. I honestly never understood why the ranking of people with special levels aren't visible to people on lower levels. It's mainly to prevent VIPs from being targeted for abduction, Shinji said leading her into the building, or at least that's what I was told. The lobby of the barracks surprised her. She wasn't sure what she had expected, 
but this certainly wasn't it. There was a large rounded couch in the center of the room and a broad assortment of strategically positioned potted plants. The doorway leading further into the building looked like it was made from two thick panes of glass. The general layout felt more like a hotel and less like a paramilitary facility. A short, stocky man sat behind a curved desk adjacent to the doors. He watched them intently as they approached. Kayla smiled to herself as she imagined the man asking if they had a reservation. Shinji, the man behind the counter snapped, shattering the illusion, shouldn't you be working? There was an incident at the mall. You should be on your way there, not trying to smuggle some floozy into the barracks for another one of your infamous lunch break flings. I am working, Shinji snarled. I'm escorting a VIP. Is that what you're calling it now? The man snickered then narrowed his eyes and asked, is that blood? Yeah, and there will be a lot more of it if you call me a floozy again, Kayla growled. What did you say, little lady, the man said in a tone that sounded as if he was issuing a challenge while being full of condescension. Before either of them could unleash another verbal volley, Shinji stepped between them and swiftly said, Nobiru, let me introduce you to Lady Darkseed. I was instructed to bring her here so she can use the shower to clean up. Nobura scoffed as he rolled his chair over to check the entry logs. He looked up at Kayla with terror in his eyes. My apologies, ma'am, he blurted out as he stood at attention. He pressed a buzzer to unlock the door leading into the barracks. Shinji rushed over and held the door open for her. Kayla paused in the doorway, turned to Nobiru, and asked, how long do you think it will be before the others start returning to the barracks? I can't be sure, he said in a properly formal tone. Give me an estimate, she narrowed her eyes as she spoke. No less than an hour, if I had to guess, he said nervously. Mind if I ask why? I was just thinking, after my shower, I might just screw his silly little brains out, Kayla said with feigned thoughtfulness. You know like a good little floozy. Lady Dark Seed, Shinji said softly as she strode past him. Please keep in mind, I do work with these people. I've already had enough problems with people spreading rumors about me. Rumors? she asked with a note of skepticism. Yes, rumors, he insisted, doing his best to keep up with her as she stormed down the hall. So how often do you have these lunchtime flings? He stopped dead in his tracks as she continued to the end of the hallway after reaching the end, she paused and spun around. Are you done with your little tirade, Shinji asked angrily, or did you finally realize you have no idea where you're going? I don't know if you were serious about wanting me to work with you for a year or two, but if you're going to be this volatile, I'm not interested. You're acting like I lured you here under false pretenses. It's not that. Kayla objected as she lowered her head and shifted uncomfortably. It's just. Just what? Shinji thought angrily, clearly not wanting to risk being further overheard. From the moment I met you at the starport, you've made me feel special, Kayla thought. What he said just made me feel. Shinji stood silently with his arms crossed and waited. Common. Kayla completed her thought after a lengthy pause. Shinji uncrossed his arms and started walking over to her while slowly shaking his head. Common, he chuckled under his breath, says the woman with stripes and three tails. I guess it is a little silly, she muttered while looking down at the tiled floor, but that's how it made me feel. Shinji reached past her and pushed the elevator call button. It doesn't feel good when someone jumps to conclusions, he goaded. Kayla frowned darkly. Okay. You made your point. Are you going to ask? About the smuggling girls and thing? No. It's really not my business. You have a history, and my petty jealousy is just an irrational emotional response. I just need to get over myself. Orphans, Shinji said irritably. They were orphans. You brought orphaned. Seeing the expression on his face she closed her mouth and let him finish. There have been sporadic food shortages. 
We came under attack dozens of times before the Alliance got system security fully worked out. There are an awful lot of orphans in the subterranean city. When our ration packs expire, we just throw them out, even though they're still safe to eat for another year at minimum. I couldn't stand seeing hungry kids with no families, so I started swiping and smuggling out the expired packs to feed the orphans. Eventually I got caught and reprimanded. They did set up an official, dumping site for the expired packs after that. The orphans all know where the site is, so it worked out in the end. Really? Kayla said, stunned, how did that turn into? Shinji shrugged. I had helped smuggling out the packs a few times. The elevator door opened. Kayla silently followed him onto the elevator. He pushed the button for the fourth floor. Sorry, Kayla said remorsefully. The elevator sped into action. Next time, just ask, he scolded. I will, she said apologetically. Well, it's partially my own damn fault. The rumor made me sound like some sort of stud, so I didn't try to stop it when I had a chance. The elevator slowed to a halt. A tone sounded as the door opened. Kayla smiled as they stepped off into the fourth floor hallway. She looked at the drab off white walls, dull gray floor tiles, evenly spaced wooden doors, and finally felt like she was in a barracks. They're seamless, Kayla noted. What are the walls made from? It's some sort of advanced polymer. Shinji said with a shrug. Something that people with knacks can't just walk through. He led her down to a short entryway which opened into a large tiled room. Here's the shower, he said. Just wait here I'll go hunt down a fresh towel for you and make sure you're not interrupted. I can put your things in the wash. I'll manage, she replied with a playful smile. Everyone else is out on assignment. You could join me. Apparently someone dropped the ball and forgot to post my reassignment. I really should stop by my room, report in and make sure they update my status. I'll need help putting my top back on, so don't take too long, Kayla grinned. That offer to join me is still open. Who's trying too hard now? Kayla smirked as her twin brown tails pulled on the strips of cloth that held her furry bra in place. He watched silently until it fluttered to the floor, exposing her breasts. Just encouraging a little spontaneity. She said while trying her best to sound seductive. Kayla winced at the sound of her own voice. Her tone sounded mocking. That's certainly not what she'd intended. I should go, Shinji said abruptly. He spun around and rushed down the hallway. She cursed under her breath as she finished getting Kayla, Kivaza's thought flowed from deep within her. On Midgard everything has its time. Calm down. This too will have its time if we're patient. She walked into the large square chamber, and turned a spigot on one of the numerous columns which were equally spaced throughout the room and braced herself. I want him so bad it aches, Kayla complained in response. She expected the water to be cold, but much to her surprise it was fairly warm right out of the shower head. That's a shame, Kivaza's consciousness mocked her, a cold shower might have done you some good. She stepped under the water. Just me, Kayla chided, I feel you in there, skulking around in the back of our mind. Like some predatory beast waiting to pounce. Waiting would be the key word. Her black tail pumped the button on the top of the soap dispenser as her twin brown tails built up a thick lather. I know, Kayla thought to her other self. She planted her hands firmly against the wall and spread her legs to approximately shoulder width. Her black tail adjusted the water temperature. Her brown tails slowly began working their way up her legs. She groaned softly as the heat of the water loosened the muscles in her shoulders as it flowed down her back. Kayla winced as her tails constricted around her thighs as they continued lathering her up. She felt Kivaza's concern. Facing Corbijani will have to wait until that heals. It didn't hurt until now. You just squeezed too hard. No, you've been running on adrenaline for a while. 
Now that you're calming down, you're starting to feel it. The armor did its job, but that impact was still serious. Keep regeneration active and it should be fine in an hour or two. I wonder what I could possibly do to pass the time, she mused. You've thrown yourself at the first person that showed interest, Kivaza taunted, you could spend your time seeking someone worthy of our attention. Her tails continued up past her hips and worked their way around her midsection. You're no fun, Kayla thought with a heavy sigh. She shivered slightly as the soapy fur on her tails passed across her breasts. What was that? Kivaza inquired with concern. I don't remember getting hit there. It's nothing, she thought in response. I just let him get me a little too worked up. My nerves are like lightning rods. Can't you tell? I'm not the one in control of our body right now. I know you can feel what I feel. When I want to. Or in other words, you're keeping your distance while insisting I need to be patient. One of us needs to maintain some objectivity. Coward. Kivaza didn't respond to the taunt as her twin tails continued their task of checking for injuries while washing the body they shared. He didn't come back, Kayla thought sadly. Actually, he did. Kivaza's thoughts flowed through their mind forcefully, you were just too distracted to notice. He collected up our gear some time ago. I assume he took it all to be cleaned. Kayla closed her eyes and reached out with her mind. It didn't take long to pinpoint Shinji's location. She found herself wondering why he was sitting alone in his room. Should I send him a telepathic message and ask him to join me? Kayla thought internally, and scolded herself, I know, stop pushing. Be patient. She finished rinsing herself off, wrung out her tails, then proceeded to swirl the air around herself. She developed this method of air drying during her trip back to the Havras system. While simple enough in theory, it was a complicated balance. Too little airflow and her fur would remain damp and musky by the end of the day, if she dried it too rapidly her fur would build up static. Other than simply being uncomfortable, she looked silly with her fur standing on end. Kayla held on to the metal shower head, as the air moved around her. Keeping herself properly grounded to prevent a charge from building. She'd still be extra fluffy, but at least she wouldn't look like a frightened Cheshire. Her Talbredon scale pants were carefully folded on the bench just outside the showers and her new shoes were carefully positioned under the bench. Both had been wiped down while she was in the shower, but her top was nowhere to be seen. She stared down and considered strolling down to his room without bothering to get dressed, but there are other people that live here. They were out on assignment, but there was no way for her to reliably know when they'd get back or where cameras might be positioned throughout the building. She sighed heavily and stared down at her clothing. Her black tail rose up in front of her with its stinger partially extended. What, Kayla thought angrily. I'll still need to cover my breasts. Every time you think about him you lose focus, Kivaza Psyche growled. You're likely to get us killed if you can't get this under control. Let me take care of this. A moment of panic seized her as their black tail retracted its stinger and sped down between her legs, but faded swiftly as it coiled up over one hip and then down around the other before coiling around her abdomen. She silently scolded herself as her brown tails wrapped themselves around her upper body. It simply hadn't occurred to her. She'd obviously allowed herself to get far too worked up and wasn't thinking straight. What was the point of that? Kayla muttered as she retrieved her pants. All we needed to do is cover our breasts. I don't see why you covered up our bottom when I can just put on. You can't lie to me, Kivaza interrupted forcefully, that's not what you were planning to do, was it? I was just going to head down to his room and... Kayla thought then paused. I know the rest, Kivaza mused, what are you waiting for? Pants, Kayla said in a commanding tone. How inefficient, Kivaza's thoughts rumbled up from deep within her, why bother when you intend to take them off the moment we get to his room? Remember what happened last time I threw myself at someone, Kayla thought angrily. Her black tail unfurled and fell away to the floor. 
There was an uncomfortable silence within her mind as she put on her pants. Nothing? Kayla thought to her other self as she stepped out of the communal shower room and strode down the hallway to where she could feel Shinji's mind. She hesitated at the faint sound of voices on the other side of the door to his room. She couldn't quite make out what was being said. The speaker sounded male and vaguely familiar, but it wasn't Shinji. Her black tail rested listlessly behind her as she stood with her arm poised, waiting for an opportune moment to knock. She considered focusing her hearing or reaching for his mind with her own, but decided not to intrude. Kayla sighed heavily, backed away from the door and leaned against the wall across from his room. The unknown voice went silent a few moments later. Kayla's remark had clearly upset her other self, but she couldn't understand why. She could feel a slight separation between them, as if the part of her which was Kivaza had walled herself off in the depths of the mind they shared. What's wrong, Kayla thought forcefully. Nothing's wrong, Shinji said as he opened the door. Kayla blushed brightly. She hadn't expected him to overhear that thought. It wasn't meant for him. We should get moving, Shinji said warmly. I thought you'd never ask, Kayla grinned as she darted across the hall. Lady Dark Seed? He stammered in confusion. As she reached the doorway. She stopped, dumbfounded, I thought you were inviting me in. That would be highly inappropriate, he said with a strange look in his eyes. Looking through the open doorway, she couldn't see anyone else in there. He must have a call. That would certainly explain a few things. His superiors must be monitoring him. He had most likely been reprimanded. Playtime would have to wait until they were away from Shadow Brigade property at least. I think you're forgetting something, she teased. Such as? My top, Kayla smirked as her brown tails slightly loosened their grip around her chest. Sorry he said with a start as he rushed into his room to grab the garment from the arm of a couch where it had been placed. Something's not right, Kivaza thought urgently as he rushed her bra to her waiting hand. Kayla enjoyed his desire washing over her as her brown tails slid down her body onto the floor. She slid her head through the loop on the top of the bikini top, turned her back to him and said, Tie me. Yes, Lady Darkseed, he said enthusiastically as he got to work tying the leather straps. Behind her back. Seems fine to me, Kayla thought to her other self. Kivaza was right in at least one regard. Shinji seemed more guarded than he had before. He'd managed to bolster his mental defenses, but Kayla was confident she could get through them if she needed to. Where would you like to go next, he asked in a surprisingly formal tone. She fought the impulse to pout as he closed the door to his room. The East Gate, Kayla said firmly. I'll make my own way from there. Lady Dark Seed, he stammered, are you sure? It's Flannix hunting season. That's the point. She said with a grin as they walked down the hallway, I don't have to worry about an audience or witnesses. Other than the Flannix. You do understand they're the ones doing the hunting, right? Kayla smirked, don't worry, you'll be staying in the car. That's not the point, he said as they stepped onto the elevator. I'd be more worried about a rock. A flannix is smart enough to stay out of my way. You think? Shinji, Kayla said with an exasperated sigh, I've fought things much more dangerous than a flannix or two. The elevator door opened into the lobby. I'm supposed to be your escort, he said insistently. I would no more have you escort me into the ladies' room than I'd want you to walk with me outside the east gate. The guard behind the main desk was watching them as they argued. Kayla found herself wondering if the other voice she'd heard upstairs had been his. She may have already gotten Shinji in even more trouble. You'll take me when where and how I ask you to, Kayla said forcefully and then took Shinji by the hand and stormed outside with him. By the time the exit was behind them, Shinji was struggling to keep up with her. Once they were both in the car, behind closed doors he said, you nearly tore my arm off trying to get out so fast, what was that all about? Why the rush? 
I just realized what I'd said and didn't want him to catch me blushing. Why were you blushing? Kayla blinked in disbelief, didn't you hear it? Hear what? I said I wanted you to take me when, where, and how I ask you to. The moment I said it I realized how it sounded. You sounded pretty upset with me, but other than that. Are you being deliberately obtuse? Kayla scoffed. Just drive me to the east gate. I'm confused, Shinji muttered as he started the car. Drive, Kayla snarled. The car pulled away from the curb and they sped off to their destination. The silence between them was palpable during the 46-minute drive. Shinji stopped the car next to a fountain. Ten yards from the fountain two massive pillars framed a metallic wall which separated the city from the forested region beyond the east gate. Heavily armed guards patrolled the top of the walls as turrets built into the pillars slowly rotated, from left to right watching for movement within the woodlands. Kayla could feel sorrow and regret welling up inside of him as he stared forward in silence. Well, she said with a heavy sigh. He swung his door open, stepped out and started making his way around to her side of the car. I've seen enough, Kivaza's thoughts sped beyond Kayla's consciousness, as her other self forcibly took control of the body they shared. I can request to have a different car sent to pick you up if you're displeased, Shinji said as he opened her door. He clearly intended to say more, but stepped back and fell silent as Kivaza stood up and stepped out of the car. He glanced downward just once. She hadn't taken the effort to make sure her heels touched the ground and he'd noticed. There are a few problems with that idea, Kivaza said firmly, not the least of which is that my old armor is still in the trunk. Sit with me, by the fountain. We need to talk. She felt panic flowing through him and the instinctive desire to run. Smooth, Kayla thought mockingly. Please, Kivaza said as she softened her tone. Yes, Lady Darkseed. Shinji said in a tone which would be more suitable for a person pleading. For their life. He cautiously followed her to the fountain. Kivaza sat on the ledge, which skirted the water's edge, and patted the stonework to her left. Will you sit with me? She asked. I think I'm fine over here, Shinji said while standing a few feet in front of her. She knew her tails could reach him, but wasn't sure if it had occurred to him. Just listen. This is new for us, and I think it's fair to say we're all more than a little frustrated. I won't argue with that, he grumbled as Kayla cautioned her about plural language usage. You were invited to join me in the shower. You didn't. I wanted us to spend some time together in your room. Still no. Those were two lost opportunities. I'm not sure what's holding you back, but it's led to a lot of second-guessing. You said you want me, and your words felt genuine. The feeling is very much mutual. Kayla struggling to regain control from deep within her as she continued to speak, what are we waiting for? Sure, let's just fuck in the back seat of the car, Shinji balked. Don't answer that, Kayla's mind pled desperately. When I asked earlier, you told me you have never had sex before, he said. I just think your first time should be special. That's not right, Kivaza glowered. He opened his mouth to speak, but she silenced him with a glance. You asked if I'd ever been with anyone before. You specified dating, a relationship as well as sex. When I said no, it was in response to all three. The way I see it, we took care of the first date at the mall. It was enjoyable so trying out the sex thing next just made sense to me. Lady Darkseed, he said slowly, most people don't do that until they're in a relationship unless they're just looking to have a fling. That makes no sense, Kivaza insisted. Shouldn't you make sure everything fits together and feels right before you consider making it a relationship? He considered her words for a few minutes before replying, then you run the risk of ending up in a relationship that's all about the sex. 
If the relationship is really good, you can find a way to make the rest work. I don't think that works the other way around. I've known some people that have stayed in terrible relationships with the excuse that it's alright if they're treated badly as long as the sex is great. You do have a point though. I suppose there could be some sort of biological conflict, but a basic understanding of xenobiology should prevent most of those problems. Kayla's consciousness re-emerged as Kivazas withdrew to consider his words. Her heels lowered until they touched the ground. Kayla stammered. She'd heard the conversation, but was there a question in there? She could feel him peeking inside her head as she struggled with her confusion. He chuckled softly as he walked over and sat next to her. I heard that thought, he whispered as he peered into her eyes. It's the person that makes it special, not the place. She blurted out without thinking. A relationship does sound nice, she said emphatically, but right now I really want to. In that moment Kayla's thoughts became intermingled with those of her sister self. Right now, he teased. She rushed to raise her mental defenses and pushed his mind away from her own, but he'd already seen the mental image which blazed within her mind as she was speaking. Kayla bit her lower lip, blushed brightly, and averted her eyes. Are you sure? She nodded her head slowly while continuing to look away. The car's a little small for that, he mused. Shinji. She snapped. What? It was your fantasy, not mine. Did it bother you? No, he insisted, but his answer felt deceptive. Really? she asked skeptically, that didn't feel like an honest answer to me. Tell me, is it something that you'd... I don't think I'm the one you need to ask about that, Shinji replied playfully, but you're right my answer wasn't completely honest. How so? I wasn't the one in the middle. Oh. Kayla whispered nervously as she bit her lower lip, and glanced down and to the right, you noticed that. Seriously, he looked startled. When you see someone's mental image, you only see it from the angle they're imagining it from. It's not too difficult. Just mentally render the image in three dimensions and you can perceive it from any angle. Kayla insisted. I've never tried that, Shinji mused. Then again it was only a flash. I think I'd need a lot more time to examine it if I were to attempt that. Kayla looked him dead in the eye, rested her hand on his and smiled deviously as she pushed a mental image into his mind. That's not fair, he complained as she stood and started walking toward the east gate. I can't imagine why, Kayla taunted as she continued walking toward the arched passage in the middle of the wall. At least you included me the first time, he called after her. Kayla's tails swept across the ground as she turned to watch him, while walking backward. He was on his way back to the car. Sorry, she thought to him, that's all you're getting this time. She spun back around and continued walking. If her white-haired friend comes back, maybe I'll just share that one with her, he thought irritably. She could tell he had no idea she was listening to his thoughts. He was just frustrated, but so was she. Stop, Kivaza. Stop, Kivaza thought urgently. What? Kayla thought more forcefully than she'd intended. Sorry, Shinji thought apologetically. Great timing, Kayla thought to her other self. He thought that was meant for him. Give me control, or I'm taking it by force, Kivaza's psyche insisted. Her tails braced her momentarily as her twin souls struggled within her. Kayla's determination alone wasn't enough to counter Kivaza's pure force of will. You're a wreck, Kivaza's thoughts rumbled as she bound Kayla's consciousness within the recesses of their mind. Get yourself under control, until then, you can stay right where you are. Kayla watched, helplessly, as Kivaza spun around and strode back to the car. She tried to object, but her sister self either couldn't hear her or refused to listen. Shinji looked panicked as Kivaza approached. I was just, he began. Trunk, Kivaza interrupted. What? 
Shinji asked as Kayla scolded herself within the depth of Kivaza's mind. Open the trunk, I need my old armor, Kivaza said firmly. Yes, ma'am, Shinji said with a start. He rushed to the back of the car and opened the trunk. Lady Dark Seed, Shinji said in alarm as she began to strip. What? Kivaza grumbled as she swiftly slid off her Talgradon pants. People can see you, he exclaimed as she pulled the sections of her armor out of the trunk with her tails. Shouldn't you do that in the car? Isn't the car a little small for that? She snickered as she started at the bottom of each leg, fastening the material tightly around each of her ankles and calves, stopping just above the knees. He continued to object, but she had no interest in his cultural inhibitions at the moment. She rotated her hips, stretched and tensed her leg muscles as she tested the fit and mobility provided by her armor. Two skirt-like lengths of fabric crossed in front of her as she moved. It only reduced her mobility slightly. Hopefully, the new suit will be better once it's complete. The old suit allowed her brown tails to either roam free or wrap around her thighs while remaining protected. Wait, he called to her urgently as she turned to resume her journey to the gate. What now? Kivaz asked as she turned to face him. Shoes, he said as he thrust a box toward her. She could feel Kayla's mocking laughter bubbling up from deep within their mind. Thank you, Shinji. She said softly as she took the box from his hands. She sat on the curb while putting on her new split sole shoes. Listen, Kivaza said as she looked up at him, I know I can be forceful and abrasive at times, but I do appreciate you. Do you? Kayla wondered deep within their mind. Thank you, he said with a quirky grin, but do you mind if I ask you one question before you rush off? Go ahead, Kivaza said with a sigh. She felt a faint tingle at the nape of her neck. How do you feel about me? Shinji asked. I might answer if you give up on that surface scan, Kivaza replied as she suppressed Kayla's frantic, panicked thoughts. Something about the emphasis put on the word you troubled both of her selves. The tingling sensation ceased abruptly. What are you really asking and why? Kivaza asked softly. I just, he gulped heavily before continuing, I don't know how to say it without sounding like I've lost my grip on reality. I really don't have time for this. Kivaza said irritably. Ask me after you've found the right words. Asking questions you already know the answer to is a waste of time. Heels up or heels down, he asked urgently. Up, Kivaza answered reflexively. I know how heels down feels about me, but I don't know how you feel. Kivaza's brown tails thrust forward pinning him against the car. She could feel fear emanating from him as she rapidly drew near, but it dissipated immediately as she pressed her body against his and kissed him firmly on the lips. Kayla protested, how come you get to kiss him, but I have to be patient. Kivaza, ignoring Kayla completely, took a step back and asked, answer enough? Shinji nodded enthusiastically. Time to go, Kivaza whispered, and then sped off. Answer me, Kayla demanded. Because I can do that and still keep my wits about me. You can't. More importantly, it avoided a lie.